What is going on, Wolfpack Nation? We have an exciting episode today that I'm telling you I've been looking forward to since June 4th, if I'm not mistaken. It has been just over a month since we got the news about our new head softball coach, Lindsay Leftwich. Coach Leftwich, thank you so much for joining us here today. Really, really do appreciate it. It's such an honor. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And, and, and again, I mean, for me, Coach, I'll be the first one to say, uh, you know, I, I know that you kind of know a little bit about our story, about how, you know, we went most of the season last season without, uh, you know, a coach. And so the biggest question for me being a softball fan, I am, I mean, I even got my Wolfpack softball shirt on, uh, was knowing who's going to be our coach, you know, and just like thinking about the possibilities and being like, well, like, you know, we haven't really heard anything yet. The tournament's already underway. So maybe it's a coach that's still in the tournament, things like that. And so I got to say that when I heard uh, your name, I was stoked. And also too, I think that I was even more stoked seeing, the past players' reactions, uh, past NC State players' reactions to the news of your hire. Um, so, uh, first of all, I mean, welcome. But, I mean, I, I guess I kind of got to ask you, I mean, like, how does it feel? I mean, uh, you, you know, being the head softball coach now for a month, I mean, it's got to be a little bit weird now not introducing yourself as assistant coach, as yeah. head coach. More than anything, it's weird, like, sending a text message to, like, a recruit or something like that. And it's like, hey, yeah. this is Lindsay from L- – I mean, NC State, like I have to like backtrack that yeah. out like so many times. Uh, 12, you know, 12 yeah. years at one place is a long time for like that, those things just to turn off. But sure. um, it's definitely weird. Like uh, just saying that I'm the head coach is is different. I, I was trying to decide today what the players are going to call me because like at LSU, everyone just calls me Linz. It's how it's always been. No one's really ever called me coach. And um, it that's weird to me for people to address me as that. So as the head coach, it happens a lot more. So I'm going to have yeah. to get used to that for sure. Yeah, no, it, it takes, you know, takes a little bit of time, but I'm sure, I'm sure it'll, you know, it'll wear onto you eventually here. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I did want to kind of ask you, uh, you know, I know that you're in Atlanta, Georgia right now on, on the recruiting trail. Uh, and the first thing I got to ask you, because it's, I mean, if you just scroll on your Twitter page for about two seconds, you know, you are a shoe lover like that. that I think, I think that goes without saying, correct? Yeah, it, it's, I have a problem. Yeah. It, it's okay. <laughs> I'm right. I'm right there with you, especially those Adidas. Those Ultra Boosts are fire. So yeah. What? Well, but because because LSU was was Nike, correct? Yeah. It, it's it, it's yeah. been a hard transition the last couple of weeks. I it's hurt my heart a little bit in some spots. Um, I have a I have a, sure. a large shoe collection, and definitely a lot of it is purple and gold. So um, mm. I packed my house two days ago. And that was, I I had to make like piles, like, okay, I can sell these, I can give these away. Like, what am I going to do in order to collect more Adidas? So that's, you know, my friends are really excited because they feel like they're going to get some massive discounts on some really expensive Jordans. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, and and, and just so you know, Jordans are... uh you know a yeah. little bit uh, i mean you know kind of held back let's let's let's, let's put it this way that a, that a transfer <laughs> came in and he posted an instagram post of him wearing a michael jordan jersey and it didn't go well so <laughs> it only uh, was, <laughs> yeah no i so. already bought i already bought some form 84s I, I have a stack of them already so i'm i'm getting ready let's go all right cool go. deal i like it so uh kind of diving into a little bit so first of all i mean you know what has been the reaction like I was talking earlier about you know how you know some a lot of former players I saw to the news about you getting hired were thrilled as can be um have you been in touch with any you know former players like what's been kind of the you know the feedback that you've gotten you know uh, you know from again whether it's former players recruits whatever that may be about your you know your news of being the head coach at NC State yeah I, I heard from so many people right away I think I think a lot of it people were like shocked like we never thought you were going to leave kind of thing. Like we thought you were Beth's assistant for forever. So I think the first initial response is like, wait a second, what's happening. Hmm. Um, but then like outside of like my immediate friend group or people that I'm super close to um, right off the bat, like within like one or two days, I just got text message after text message or DM or whatever from so many former players of people that That's were awesome. just like, Hey, we're stoked to be involved. This is my cell phone. Let us know how, like how we can help or what you need or whatever. And then, Uh, I had been in the office for like two or three days and I sent an alumni email out to like our big alumni group that we have and was just trying to be super like transparent and honest with them. Like I want them to be as involved as they want to be. I think it's a huge reason, like a huge part of recruiting to tell current kids, like 
this is why people love Raleigh and this is why people love NC State. And so I got so much cool feedback from that. Just people that said, hey, like we haven't been involved in a little while or I lost touch because I had a family or because of whatever. And like people that were just like, this is kind of a new start for us too as an alumni group and and we're ready to dive back in, which was is super encouraging because it, it's so cool for like an older person that played to like get to sit down with a current student athlete like people want to touch them and get to know them and um and you know i, I want to be able to connect them in that way for sure and and the last question i want to ask before i let michael uh, come in here is uh you know i know that i i've seen a you know a couple of the interviews that you've done with uh you know national pu- public you know mas- national media sorry and uh, even like inside pack sports things like that and the question that's asked over and over again which i want to you know just go ahead and just kind of preface on real quick but then we'll move on to other things that maybe have not been talked about as much as so why just you know did you decide to take a chance and become a head coach you know obviously you know I'm sure there's a lot of you know conservative conservatism which you know probably went through your head saying well I can just stay at LSU and I mean yeah. I'm sure you know Beth Tarina's not going to get fired. I mean, she's, she's one of the, you know, top, you know, softball coaches in the country. So, I mean, I'm sure as long as she's there, she'd love to have you there. And so you have a job, you know, for as long as you like, and uh, you know, there's even a possibility of maybe taking over for her, you know, potentially one day, you know, so there's a lot of, you know, conservative there, but then you decide to, you know, take a chance and be a head, be your own head coach. So go ahead and answer me that question. Uh, you know, for those who maybe have not heard that answer before. Yeah. I, it, it happened really fast. And I think that, you know, one of the cool things about like just my journey to this point, like when Beth hired me back in 2000, no, 2007, geez, forever ago, um, 2006, something like that. We, mm-hmm. when she took the job at LSU, I'd worked for her for four years at that point. And she like forced me to interview at FIU and was like, they, they will hire you. You should take this interview. It's a great stepping stone. And like, I was so stressed about it. I was like, I don't, Beth, I don't want to be the head coach. Like, I don't want to do those things. It's just like, just take the interview. And I remember talking to Allie Habits, who's the assistant at Alabama. She's been an assistant for 25 years. Um, I talked to her at that time, way like a long time ago, 2011, and was like, why? Like, why are you still an assistant? Should I do this? And she was like, you know, everyone outside of your immediate circle, they always talk about how like, oh, this is the right next step. This is what you do to climb the ladder. They're like, she's like, Lynn's none of them know, like none of them know your plan. None of them know like what God has for you. And that would like spoke to me so much. And she was like, if this is right and you're supposed to be the head coach, it'll show up again. And I remember I went on the interview at NC state and I was on the plane on the way back to Raleigh. And like, I was just like overcome with like those words from Allie, like saying like, if it's supposed to be, it's going to show up again. And all the things that I felt about NC State in the interview process, in like in what people were telling me, the way they talked about Raleigh, and just the things that I think could happen at like on that field, the things that NC State has is set up for from just a athletic perspective, everything seemed to fit. And you know, and and I just heard over and over again, like it'll show up again and it'll be right. And, and this yeah. was the first head coaching interview that I'd gone on that I had that feeling like this was right. That's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, go ahead, Michael. Yeah. What would, so obviously during that interview process, kind of what you said that you said Raleigh kind of sold you and it just felt right, you know, in your conversations with, with the AD, Boo Corrigan, I mean, what, what did he what was his pitch to you to get you? Gosh, to it was so like that you can share. Of yeah, course. <laughs> no, no, it, it was, you know, the, just the biggest part of it, like he first said it and here I am in my head thinking, oh, I'm just taking this interview because I'm supposed to because Beth, Beth says, Lynn, you should interview like it's good for you. It's a really good job, like whatever. And like in my brain, I'm thinking I'm only taking this interview because Beth is making me kind of thing. And <laughs> and they I, they get me on the phone. And the first thing they talk about is they're like, we know you're going to win. We know that you're really good at softball and that you're. Like you're like you're great at those things. They're they're like, but you're in this room with us right now and you're even on this panel because we know that you're better at people. And they said that to me and I was just like, come on, like really? Like <laughs> fine, like what? I have to do this then is what it made me feel like. But like, cause no one has ever said that to me. I've I've been on multiple head coaching interviews and I've I've sat in, you know, the final three and I've had people offer me jobs and no one's ever said mm-hmm. like you're here because you're great at loving people, you know? And, yeah. and so that was huge because I felt like I could do this 
and I could be myself and I didn't have to be this version that everyone thinks a head coach is supposed to be, you know, and I knew that if I hired a great staff around me, I could still be good at what I'm good at, which is like so much of the fear of like taking this leap is like, can you, can you be good at your things and still be the boss and still delegate and still do that stuff? And, um, I sat in the room with the admin and they just reiterated over and over again. Like, we know you're going to win. We know that's going to come. But the first thing we need you to do is just love the people that are on the field with you. And that like that beyond anything else sold me. Amen. Well, and, and, uh, we'll definitely talk a little bit about your assistant coach hires, which I love. Oh my, oh my gosh. Like I, I'm telling you coach, like everything you've done in the last month, <laughs> I'm just like, yes, yes. Like the assistant <laughs> coaching hires, the posts on Twitter. I'm like, Oh, let's go. This is awesome. Um, and, uh, but you know, I do want to kind of talk about, uh, you know, your journey, even just, you know, as a player, you know, starting off at North- Northwestern state, uh, which, uh, I couldn't find, but I'm assuming just because a lot of your <laughs> coaching is in the catcher position were you a catcher yeah I was a catcher and a third baseman I ended up playing a lot more third than than catching in my time just like the other catcher was my roommate and we were both the same age and it it was what it was but really I was a hitter like I could Mm -hmm. I could pick it a little bit but like I I made my money with my stick so yeah there you go well before we continue I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor Flatlands Jessup Insurance Group that has our whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time worrying and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. Yeah. What? Well, yeah, I mean, 44 RBIs in your sophomore season, uh, tying third most in the Northwestern State history. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, definitely could say that. But kind of talk to me in terms of, uh, you know, kind of a two-fold question here. So what made you decide to get into coaching? Because I know you uh, had a degree in psychology. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure there was interest there in a professional, you know, business route. But then also, too, how would you say your um, – your coaching style has been developed. I mean, I know a lot of coaches might say, I'm a player's coach, you know, but I mean, and it definitely, everything I've seen, you know, from coach Tarina, et cetera, uh, would hundred percent agree to that. But, you know, how would you say your, your style has developed and what would you say that coaches would say about you? Yeah. I um, say about you. I, I had four head coaches in five years and I had 13 assistants when I was playing, we, you know, we were a smaller university and I played before super regionals. And so, like we were good and we were little and we would win. And then those coaches would get bigger jobs and then we would win and they would get bigger jobs. So, Mm. you know, it was a blessing and a curse. It was, I, you know, I had to be adaptable. I had to learn a lot of those things, but then on top of that, like I saw what I thought worked and what I thought didn't work, you know? And I think Beth would tell you back when she hired me, that was part of the reason she hired me. Like I'd never run an offense before. I was super young in my coaching career. I actually had been a pitching coach for, like 10 months at Wichita state, which was the craziest move I ever decided to make. But <laughs> yeah. but in that, like I kind of saw all these things and Beth was like, that's a huge reason I hired you was because like you had all of this experience that like you didn't even know you had, you know? And so that was, that was a big part of that. And then from just getting into coaching and what I wanted to do, I wanted nothing to do with it. Like college was hard for me. I had a lot of, co- I had a ton of coaches. I had a ton of transition. Um, my sophomore year, I tore my labrum, which turned into a rotator cuff tear. And like literally like 11 months later, I tore my PCL in my knee. And like it just kind of like oh. it just snowballed on me and I could never get healthy again. Um, I ended up not playing my senior season because I had some a couple of ruptured discs in my lower back. And the doctor was like, hey, if you want to walk in 10 years, you should stop. Um, mm. So I stayed on as a student assistant and I wanted like I wanted to run from softball. I was like, this is I, I don't want anything else to do with this. And, you know, and then as I stayed on as a student assistant, like I realized like, hey, like this is cool. Like getting people to to like grow and understand this stuff is really neat. And like it kind of like grabbed on to me a little bit for the longest time I like I have a degree in psych and I have an art minor and I really thought I was going to end up like working for FCA or Canacook or like mm-hmm. some sort of like outdoory sports type, whatever, but I'd never really mm-hmm. saw myself in coaching. And then I kind of, kind of got under my skin and I couldn't get out and I've been here ever since. Yeah. 
and they kind of talked to me. I know that the kind of, I kind of asked, you know, multiple part question there, but I mean, like, you know, your players, I mean, sorry, your coaching style, you know, would you, I mean, would you build off of, I mean, players coach? Yes, you are that for sure. But would you add anything to that in terms of your style as a head coach? You know, are you a, a yeller or are you more of a motivator? Per yeah, se? I'm definitely not a yeller. I mean, I can get, I can get <laughs> loud, but I get loud because sure. I'm like, feisty and energetic but i'm i'm definitely not a yeller at all i think i don't know what my style is yet right like i'm gonna figure this thing (laughs) out but but at the same time like i think like just in the things that have been given to me and that delegated to me from you know my head coach like i think that i i don't want to be anyone's boss like at all i want i hired really good assistants and i want them to walk alongside me and and do what they're great at so in turn i feel the same way about my players like they're going to do what I do They're The culture is, is whatever that word is. The culture is what we live every day and what we do every day. Mm-hmm. So like, I want to, I want to do the things with them. You know, like if we have a morning lift, then I'm going to the morning lift. If we have like, I'm, I, I just, I, I don't think that anything should be expected of them. That's not expected of me. And so like, yeah. um, I, I think, I think I will gain their trust and, and build off of all those things just by like meeting them where they are. Um, yeah. you know, and, and, and I, I'm fully aware that, you know, there's gotta be a line and I, you know, you gotta be able to balance like those relationships and whatever. But at the end of the day, like as much as I want to win the national championship, like I want to grow great humans. Like I, I want yeah. them to walk out of here, like loving NC state and being better people and like just being passionate about whatever they're great at. And I think that you can only do that by investing in them. And so I would like to invest in them as much as I can. And then on top of that, let's be really good at softball too. Amen. <laughs> there you go. Amen. Um, so obviously you're, you're out recruiting right now. I'm sure you did a lot of recruiting at LSU. What, what do you find? How do you connect with recruits? Um, and, and have you seen that? Have you had to change kind of the way your strategy to recruiting over, over the years? I think that like, I mean, it's, it's the ACC. It's a, it's a power five. It's, it's yeah. Florida state. Who's just in the world series. It's Clemson. Who's like making a run at things. Virginia tech, who is doing great things. Like I, I don't think I have to change anything about what I've done for the last 12 years. And I think right. in the last 12 years, I have proven that like, not only am I good at evaluating talent and finding it, like I'm willing to like do the work to follow them and to get them on campus. And, and I really always believed at LSU that if we could get them on campus, we would win. Like we would yeah. like one, because of who we were as a group of people, but then two, because LSU was such a cool place. I see so many of the things, same things from Raleigh. Everyone talks about how like the tailgating at NC state is the best in the ACC. Like <laughs> I know that life from LSU. Like I get yeah. it. Like I get that just like being able to pull people in and let them, you know, like grow in the community that they're in. And I think that, um, I think I get to recruit the same kids I was recruiting before, which is so cool because I've yeah. built all of those relationships along the way. Like I probably spent the most time on the road at LSU. I, I don't have a family yet. And so, you know, I, I would choose to be out and about more because I could, because mm-hmm. uh, you know, if it took some pressure off of Beth and her missing her three kids or Howard and him missing trip, like I was going to do that. And on top of that, I was mm-hmm. good at it. You know, and so yeah. as much as I'm going to delegate some of the recruiting to my assistants because they're great at it, I still want to be the one that's out on the road and be the face of this thing. And um, I don't know. I think that, that that's important that people see us standing around in red and black and, and white. I yeah. think that, you know, I think that that hasn't happened as much as maybe it should have in the last couple of years. And I think like we hit this thing hard this summer. Uh, you know, we've been put on the road a lot of days in a row here while also living out of a suitcase, while also trying to pack our houses while doing all those things. And I think that, um, I think we're going to bring in some kids that people are going to be really, really excited about. Our 24 class was already committed. Um, and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, and I wanted to honor those commitments. I think that it was Mm -hmm. important to, to do that. And then we'll really hit the 25 class hard, um, here the beginning of September 1st. That's when we can talk to them. Um, yeah. we got a huge transfer out of the transfer portal. Um, uh, Peyton Bordeaux, that was massive. She was a great yeah. player yeah. at Georgia. She got injured last year. And so, um, had some down numbers in that space, but just what we know about her and what I know about her and playing against her for so long, she's going to instantly make us better. We have a great catcher already on the team, but we only had one on the, like on the entire roster. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. was like from the moment, from the moment I got the job, like that was the, like on the trail of where's the catcher that fits with us and, and what we're trying to do. 
Yeah, right? no, I completely agree. And uh, an, an experienced player too, yeah. you know, you know, a, a leader that could jump right on the, the, the roster as well. Uh, so one kind of question, which I wanted to kind of ask to kind of wrap up this first part, coach, you kind of talked about, you know, bring him to campus. And one thing which I wanted to ask you about, which is a little bit different is kind of the format, the layout a little bit of, you know, what's going on around the softball stadium. You know, I know that at LSU, I even like pulled up a map being like, well, let me like, what's, wh where is the LSU softball stadium? And it's really, it seems like to me from the map that really the campus and all the athletics are basically right, right on top of each other. Yeah. They're right next to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Which obviously with state is a little different with the fact that obviously the, <laughs> the football stadium and the men's basketball is, is off campus. Uh, so, you know, would you say that that is a benefit at all? Like, you know, like, like what, 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 was, think, what has been, I think from a yeah. fan, I think from a fan experience perspective at LSU, it was cool that everything was right there together. Cause when things sure. were going on, like people could kind of float. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I see the same thing happening with our field here um, at NC State. I think that like it's smack in the middle of campus. It's in these big walkways where people are all the time, directly across mm -hmm. from the Sooner Center. And from what I hear, Reynolds yeah. is jumping all the time and is like the yeah. place to be. So I think that like, you know, I think if we hit like if we really can hit like a marketing like thing running right in the beginning i think like we invite people in and we make it fun and exciting i want to do some different branding things on the back of the stadium um kind of already sat down and talked with facilities about that just like like brighten it up and make people realize like oh yeah that's not that's not just like the rec field that's down there like this is this is the place to be from what i understand we right. still sell the place out like last year they're playing you know they're playing a ranked opponent the last weekend of the year at home and they sell the place out with no coaches and only having won 19 games. Like I think that, yeah, that yeah. that's a huge testament to state fans. And so I want to, I want to make sure that we continue to invite them into our space for sure. Yeah. And we'll definitely talk in part two a little bit in terms of kind of the future goals of the program for sure, as I'm sure a lot of state fans, including myself, are very curious of kind of what aspirations you have in mind for sure. Um, and to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, the assistant coaches and things like that. But first of all, coach, again, uh, you know, make sure, you know, well, sorry, coach. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us here for the first part. Again, we'll jump in here for part two here. Um, make sure again, Wolfpack Nation to go and support NC State softball. Again, it, it's, it's super cheap to do it. It's super easy to do it. again. Just like Coach says, right smack smack dab in the middle of campus. You can't miss it. And uh, make sure to go and do it. Games are happening the whole whole season. So make sure to go and follow them at Pack Softball on Twitter. And uh, make sure to go support these girls for sure. This gets they're going to make some noise this year, and I'm excited to see it for sure. Uh, but make sure again to join us for part two here as we continue this interview. And uh, make sure again for us hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. If you enjoyed this conversation, hit that like button, and also give us a follow. Tuffy Talk now on Twitter and. Instagram and TikTok. Thank you so much. And we'll see y'all for part two. Go pack y'all. <laughs>